What do you think of that title, Hooked on Growth? Yes, I, I think it's a great title because I think we are, in a sense, hooked on growth. It's, it's something that's not really contributing any longer to our, our sustainable well-being, uh, and yet we keep pursuing that, that goal inappropriately. So I think we need to, to, uh, to get off of, of, uh, of growth, get off of, of, uh, of oil. Mm -hmm. you know, even President Bush acknowledged that we were addicted to oil. Uh, we're addicted to consumption and we're addicted to this idea of economic growth when it's no longer really contributing to our, our well-being. Is it fair to say that what most Americans and citizens of industrialized nations probably regard as growth is predicated on the notion of GDP and even maybe before John Maynard Keynes, Adam Smith and the invisible hand? Well, well GDP was really, a, uh, came after World War II, you know, and it was a, an attempt to try to measure uh, our, our economic activity and productivity. It was never designed as a measure of economic well-being or welfare. And so the problem is that we've confused it with that. And GDP, production of economic marketed goods and services, is a means to an end. Mm -hmm. And certainly in that period, that was something that did contribute to improving uh, welfare and well-being. But there are many other things that contribute to well-being and welfare, and they're outside the market system. They're not measured by, by GDP. And so there's two issues. There's one is, you know, how do we actually measure what we truly want? And the other is, how does having the wrong measures and pursuing increasing the wrong measure affect us? And you could look at today with the current financial crisis. We define that as two uh, quarters without economic growth. We don't care about misery. We don't care about poverty. We don't care about unemployment. So is our effort to increase GMP to return to that growth of GMP, employing one hedge fund manager who makes $3 billion a year is the same as employing um, 100,000 uh, you know, uh, heads of families who make $30,000 a year. Uh, the problem is that we're, we're not living in that world anymore. We're in a world now where all the external costs, all the things that GDP doesn't measure that are both negative and positive, the things that it doesn't pick up that are positive, are now much more important uh, than, than the things that it does pick up. So all the stuff outside the market is really more important than the stuff that GDP picks up. So there are alternative measures of, of, uh, of well-being, this thing called the Genuine Progress Indicator. Actually, yeah, the GPI. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it, uh, you know, it adds things like uh, the value of volunteer work and, and, uh, and household labor, which are left out of GDP. It, it accounts for the distribution of, of income uh, because that's a, a prime contributor to people's sense of well-being. You know, a dollar's worth of income to a rich person doesn't really contribute as much additional welfare as a dollar's worth of income to a poor person. So you have to adjust for the income distribution. And that lack of uh, 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 the income distribution actually affects a whole range of social problems that we're, that we're uh, as we're learning. Um, and then it subtracts all of the things that shouldn't be counted as positives. The cost of crime, the cost of pollution, air and water pollution, the loss of natural capital and social capital assets. And when you do that for the U.S., you find that, you know, since 1975 or so, uh, we haven't really been making any real progress. Our genuine progress has been relatively flat. So if you look at an individual and you talk about growth, and for many people these days that means I need a job, I need to buy goods and services for my family just to, you know, make it day to day. How do you, how do you reconcile this against this larger picture of a genuine progress index in terms of um, introducing more qualitative components with, through the lens of sustainability. I guess sustainability is two things. It's how we use our natural resources to, a, a, you know, is the what we have side. And then in terms of creating what we want is the other end of sustainability. We've got to use those to create a desirable end. People say we need economic growth um, because without economic growth, we're not going to create the jobs we need. And without economic growth, we're going to be condemned to poverty. We'll always have people in poverty. We need to grow our way out of poverty. So I think the problem is that um, there's no evidence, first of all, that we do grow our way, our way out of poverty. Our per capita consumption, as I mentioned earlier, has more than doubled since 1969. Poverty rates are higher. We really need to focus our, refocus our priorities. If our goal is to increase ever more production, ignoring the workers, then we focus just on the output side. We really need to redesign our society to provide employment for the workers and where jobs is not just consumption that's the end activity, it's the jobs. We create rewarding, meaningful jobs that keep people happy instead of consumption. We don't know all the exact answers, but we do know if we lay forward things we need to focus on providing, on um, equality, on employment, on ending poverty, we'll dedicate the resources to that. If we focus simply on growth, we'll dedicate the resources to that. Um, again, that, you know, that we're pursuing the wrong goal there, it's time, and it's time to switch. It's time to get unaddicted, to get mm -hmm. off of, get unhooked from growth.